Usually all people care about when talking supercomputers is speed. The big thing now is the race to build an exascale computer, which is being spearheaded by Intel and Cray. But honestly, the harder and arguably more important work around supercomputers is figuring out how to make them more eco-friendly. Unsurprisingly, it takes a lot of energy not only to power a supercomputer, but also keep it cool. For example, the Department of Energy's 200 petaflop summit is currently the world's most powerful supercomputer. It's the size of two tennis courts, and it's comprised of 4,608 servers with more than 9,022 core IBM processors and over 27,000 NVIDIA GPUs. Cooling this monstrosity takes 4,000 gallons of water a minute and uses enough electricity to power 8,100 homes. By comparison, NASA's 3.69 petaflop Aitken looks positively quaint. But that's more than enough computing power to run the advanced simulations that will be crucial to planning our next manned mission to the moon. More importantly though, Aitken represents a real leap in efficiency. It's 46,080 cores and 221 terabytes of storage are cooled through a mixture of fans, recirculated water, and plain old California air. Through the creative use of the Bay Area's naturally cool temperatures, NASA and Hewlett Packard Enterprise were able to remove the need for a cooling tower and save millions of gallons of water, 3 million in 2018 alone. It can also use about 2 million kilowatt hours less electricity than a similarly powered supercomputer. Part of its efficiency is due to its reliance on modules. The system is built around second generation Intel Xeon processors, connected over Mellanox InfiniBand, and housed inside Schneider Electric Smart Shelter containers. This gives the system greater flexibility for cooling, speeds deployment, and makes them quite scalable. So 3.69 petaflops isn't the limit, it's just the first step. And if you wanna make sure you find out what the next step is, you should make sure to click that subscribe button.